that's this morning's hard charging done. It was a bit of a, a mad route really because I was right over on the east coast and I wanted to go sort of northwest across to here to Cannock Chase in Staffordshire. Um, have others noticed this? The motorways, most of the ones in England anyway, they all run north to south. There was no fast route going across. So I actually had to go south a little bit, then west a little bit, and then pick up the motorway to go north. There is direct roads across, but they're smaller roads through towns and that sort of thing. It's not as efficient. So yeah, it was okay. On the efficiency front, very surprised so far. I did have to stop today to fill up with fuel, uh, but I have done 400 odd miles so far on this trip. So I had to put another 90 quid in it. Um, but I'm doing 38 to the gallon. Way more than I expected out of this old, old truck being, you know, over two ton, aerodynamics of a brick, um, and on all terrain tires. On, on road tires, I think I'll probably get into the low 40s, which is quite surprising. So that's all been good news. The only bad news on the way up here, uh, M6, the M6 was actually shut as such. The traffic was being held because there was cows on the motorway. Not ideal. <laughs> so I had to use the bloody M6 toll road. Not much of it, £12.50 I think it was or something. What a bastard. But it's better than sitting on a stopped motorway. Hey. Can't really help it, never mind. Right, I'm gonna get a snack, get a drink, and then give Brian a call. He's camping here with me. I think he lives fairly local. So yeah, I'll just get organized and I'll give him a bell. Right, that's the Bergen packed. I need a big bag for this one because I'm using the French army tent and it is quite bulky. Not particularly heavy, but it is bulky. So uh, let's hope we're not going too far because I've got a fair bit of rubbish in there. Right, we're all set up on in Cannock Chase. Nice. Been past here a million times driving, but never stopped. It's very good. It really is. Um, let me have a, a wander around here, and I'll show you what's where. Right, I'm using the French army tent. Rain's forecast. Has to be done, doesn't it, really? Got to give it a test at some point. So we set up, there's a nice nice fire pit there. Because uh, I'm camping with, with Brian, and this is one of his sort of regular locations. He's over here. Good afternoon. Um, and he's here with Bango. Bango Banshee. That's a, a, another good little tent. Perfect. And, oh, yeah. It's a woodland, basically. What more do you want me to say? But it is a very large woodland. I don't think there's any chance of us uh, being discovered. It's not a permission location, but it's big enough that we can get lost easily. Well, would you believe it? It is half past eight already. We've been so busy chatting here, but I don't know where the, the time went. I really don't. No wonder I was feeling hungry. Um, so I've just put on, I've brought some ration meals with me. Um, sweet and sour chicken with rice is what I've got for tonight. Quite looking forward to it. Uh, um, I, I think I've had that before, but not for a long, long time. And I'm a bit of a sweet and sour fan, so that should go down nicely. Um, I don't know where these evenings are going, I, I really don't. And it seems to be there's a lot of chatting at each stop. What's the common denominator? Me. Yes, I'm a chatty bastard. Sorry. Right, I'll get on with this and I'll come back to you later. Well, it's bedtime. That was a, a, a really good evening. It's always a, a, a good sign. When you think to yourself, God, that fire's getting low and we're running short of wood. And then you check your watch and it's nearly one o'clock in the morning. No wonder we run out of wood. <laughs> but yeah, it's always a good sign that the time's flown past sort of thing. I had a yeah, nice evening with Brian, having a chat around the fire. 
Um, no rain yet. Her forecast was from rain about 10 o'clock, but no sign of it yet. I thought at last I was going to get a decent tent test for you know the F1 and our water, F2, how waterproof it is, but maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just running behind and it might rain overnight. I don't know. To be honest, I don't particularly want to get wet. So, but I have faith. I think it'll be all right. So, I'm going to settle down and get some sleep before it gets any bloody later. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. That rained all night. It's still raining now, I think. But I'm dry. I don't think the tent has leaked. Well, certainly at the moment there's no evidence of it leaking. Unless it's, you know, in a corner or something, wherever the bag is. Won't know until I clean the stuff up. But at the moment, I'm, well, I'm dry. So, uh, yeah, not bad going at all. Oh, I think I'll put the cap on. Hmm. Well, we've all packed up. Um, from the time we got up, it was still raining and we're a bit soggy now. All the gear's wet, so it was just a quick pack up and ram it back in the bag. But we've cleared the site, we're all uh, clean and tidy. There's Brian. He's all packed, we're ready to wander. Let's go. Of course, now we've packed up. The rain stopped, the sun's come out. It's always the way, isn't it? But at least it's gonna be nice for, for walking out. Right, I'm back to the truck. Decision time. This is day five that I've been out. Do I go to Wales? I've just checked the weather forecast and the weather forecast for the next two or three days is horrendous. I don't fancy getting wet again and again. Or do I just head south now and go home? To be perfectly honest, I am getting tired. I'm getting quite weary now. Um, I don't know. Bollocks, I'm going home. Decision made. Well, I've just stuck the route in the sat-nav. It's four and a half hours to home. Um, it's about 220, 230 miles from here, something like that. But at least the sun's come out. I think I'll push on, stick some mileage in, stop somewhere and probably get some breakfast, treat myself, and then charge for home. I should be home. Early afternoon, I'm, I'm thinking, probably home one, two o'clock, depending on the traffic and the glorious M25, of course. But uh, yeah, it's the end of the trip. But I've done what I set out to achieve. Met a couple of nice, nice guys, Terry and, and Brian. You know, thanks to both of them for hosting me, as it were, and giving me a location. It was a pleasure. And uh, a, a special mention also to my mate Carl. It was nice, Mr. Hazard Snowden. Um, it, it was nice to meet up with him in the pub in the pub the other night and have a few beers and a chat. So uh, yeah, it's it's been a good trip. So probably won't film any more until I get home. Well, I've had a a good run over the last three hours. Been busy, but kept flowing. We've got to the Dartford Bridge. So up and over here, crossing the Thames. Once we drop onto dry land the other side, we're back in Kent. And I will only be about an hour, hour and 15 from home. And the weather's improving the further south I get. Situation normal. And I'm home. One o'clock on the button. 
and a good run. Four, four hours from, from Staffordshire, so that was okay. What's the final score? I averaged 37.8, which is pretty respectful, I think, for this old truck. Uh, and the total, 16 hours of driving in total, 670, I think it's 673 miles, can't see without my glasses. Average speed of 42, <clears throat> it's because there was a lot of back lanes and all sorts of stuff and even a little bit of off-roading. So, all in all, good journey.